Bless the Lord, who forgives all our sins. His mercy endures forever. I am the Lord your God, who brought you out of bondage. You shall have no other gods but me. Amen. Lord, have mercy. You shall not make for yourself any idol. Amen. Lord, have mercy. You shall not invoke with malice the name of the Lord your God. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Remember the Sabbath day and keep it holy. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Honor your father and your mother. Amen. Lord, have mercy. You shall not commit murder. Amen. Lord, have mercy. You shall not commit adultery. Amen. Lord, have mercy. You shall not steal. Amen. Lord, have mercy. You shall not be a false witness. Amen. Lord, have mercy. You shall not covet anything that belongs to your neighbor. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed. By what we have done, and by what we have left undone, we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your <coughs> sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. You shall not make for yourself. 
yourself an idol, whether in the form of anything that is in the heaven above, or that is on the earth beneath, or that is in the water under the earth. You shall not bow down to them or worship them. For I, the Lord your God, am a jealous God, punishing children for the inequity of parents, to the third and fourth generations of those who reject me, but showing steadfast love to the thousandth generation of those who love me and keep my commandments. You shall not make wrongful use of the name of the Lord your God, for the Lord will not acquit anyone who misuses his name. Remember the Sabbath day and keep it holy. For six days you shall labor and do all your work. But the seventh day is a Sabbath to the Lord your God. You shall not do any work. You, your son or your daughter, your male or female slave, your livestock, or the alien resident in your towns. For in the six days the Lord made heaven and earth the sea and all that is in them, but rested the seventh day. Therefore, the Lord blessed the Sabbath and consecrated it. Honor your father and your mother, so that your days may be long in the land that the Lord your God has given you. You shall not murder. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not bear false witness against your neighbor. You shall not covet your neighbor's house. You shall not covet your neighbor's wife, or male or female slave, or ox, or donkey, or anything that belongs to your neighbor. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The point of Psalm for today is Psalm 19, as printed in your bulletin. Let us read Psalm 19 responsibly by half us. The heavens declare the glory of God, and the firmament shows his handiwork. One day it tells its tale to another, and one night imparts knowledge to another. Although they have no words or language, and their voices are not heard, their sound has gone out into all the lands, and their message to the ends of the world. In the deep has he set a pavilion for the sun. It comes forth like a bridegroom out of his chamber. It rejoices like a champion to run its course. It goes forth on the uttermost edge of heavens and runs about to the end of it again. No. Nothing is hidden from its burning heat. The law of the Lord is perfect and revives the soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure. statutes of the Lord are just and rejoice the heart. The commandment of the Lord is clear and it is light to the eyes. The fear of the Lord is clean and endures forever. The judgments of the Lord are true and righteous altogether. More to be desired are they in gold, more than much fine gold. Sweeter far are the honey than honey in the gold. By them also Servant in life. And he can enter the prayer of the Lord. Who can tell how often he offends? When is he not as he is in all us? Above all, keep your servant from presumptuous sins. Let them not get dominion over me. Then shall I be whole and sound, and innocent of great offense. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart. Be acceptable in your sight. O oh, Lord, my strength and my redeemer. A reading from Paul's first letter to the Corinthians. The message about the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing, but to those who are being saved, it is the power of God, for it is written. I will destroy the wisdom of the wise and the discernment of the discerning. I will for it. Where is the one who is wise? Where is the scribe? Where is the debater of this age? Has not God made foolish the wisdom of the world? For since in the wisdom of God, the world did not know God through wisdom. 
God decided through the foolishness of our proclamation to save those who believe. For Jews demand signs, Greeks desire wisdom, desire wisdom, but we proclaim Christ crucified, a stumbling block to Jews and foolishness to Gentiles. But to those who are called, both Jews and Greeks, Christ, the power of God, and the wisdom of God. For God's foolishness is wiser than human wisdom, and God's weakness is stronger than human strength. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. God.
than that. I wouldn't have wanted it to happen this way, but in spite of what we've suffered and lost, or maybe precisely because of what we've suffered and lost, I felt the presence of the Holy Spirit in a way I've never before in my entire life. In the midst of the loss and grief, there's been a palpable sense of peace and calm that we simply cannot generate on our own. Have you felt that last couple of weeks? It tells me that God really is with us in all of this. If we have eyes to see and ears to hear, signs keep popping up that point to that truth. And it's been happening in ways I could not have anticipated or expected. So this morning, I want to share several experiences of that with you. <coughs> Two weeks ago, I was walking from the church office to the gym for the first worship service after the fire. And when I made it to the middle school carpool circle, a very smartly dressed lady I'd never seen before walked up to me. She hugged me. She spoke words of comfort. She gave me a beautiful card with a beautiful handwritten message in it that included a generous donation. And she signed it, Your Methodist Christian Cousin. I noted in my sermon that Sunday that Jesus made it through his time of trial of the wilderness as angels ministered to him, and that we would now be angels who ministered to each other. Turns out some of those angels are people we don't know and may never see again. There have been a lot of them. I didn't expect that. Later that Sunday afternoon, I had the privilege of speaking with the captain of the first firefighter team that arrived at the church. He said that when they realized they had been called out to a church fire, they desperately wanted to save our building. And it broke their hearts that they couldn't do it. He also told me of their harrowing experience in Pope Hall as they tried to battle the fire. And how a door came to their rescue. They were trying to put out the fire in the Atomite vesting room across the hall from the restrooms. But part of the roof in Pope Hall collapsed, blocking them from exiting the way that they had entered. For a few desperate moments, they thought they were not going to make it. But then they discovered the door leading out into the breezeway. Here's what he texted me. He said, I will never forget the feeling realized, realizing that we were trapped. Now, without water, with five to seven minutes of air left, and our only direction left to go was towards everything that was on fire. That door saved my life. That was my miracle, and I will never forget it. I will always be grateful. And he continued, rebuild and know that a disaster happened that night, but so did a miracle. That place is a miracle. Another miracle happened later that Sunday evening when we heard a knock on the front door. It was the three St. Louis Amigas, <laughs> Ashley, Brittany, and Brooklyn. Somehow, and I really don't want to know the details, somehow they had managed to get access to the sacristy, and their biggest mission was to recover our vestments and the petty point stole that my mother so painstakingly made over 20 years ago in honor of my ordination to the priesthood. You know, I had told Julie earlier that I was convinced that it was just a fact that that stall was either lost or so damaged that we could never be worn again. But here it was. Darkened in places by soot and smelling of smoke, but fully intact and capable of being restored. I really did not expect to see it again. Nor did I expect how many people said that one of their first thoughts after hearing about the fire was, what about, what about that stall that Father Brian's mother made? That just blew me away. And my mother as well shared all of this with her. That stole is no longer a sign, just a sign of a mother's love for her son. 
It is now an outward and visible sign of God's love for St. Luke's. And I'm really hoping I can wear it again on Easter Sunday. Something else happened that I can't explain. I was leaving the church office to go to my vehicle, and I saw that there was a piece of paper at the bottom of the stairs. It was a charred page from a hymnal that had made its way from the debris into the staff parking lot. Here are the words to the first verse of the hymn that's on this page. What thanks and praise to thee we owe, eternal God and word divine, for Luke, thy saint, through whom we know so many gracious words of God. I mean, what are the chances that out of all the pages of the hymn, one page would survive, somehow make its way over the church office building into the staff lot a week after the fire, and then the hymn would be dedicated to our patron saint, Luke the Evangelist. I definitely did not expect that. And then there was a rather humorous incident when I went to lunch with a clergy colleague, and I opened up a fortune cookie, which read, New financial resources will soon become available. <laughs> I, I guess we need to eat more often at P.F. Chang. So. One of my favorite unexpected signs of God's presence with us came out of the blue from a five-year-old boy. I learned about it when I got a text message from Lacey Anderson. She wrote, James woke up and told me he had a dream that he was a construction worker and that he built St. Louis back. That's not just a dream. That's the truth. Because James and all of our children and youth will definitely play an important role in building St. Louis back. Working together, each and every one of us will help build St. Luke's back. One of the lessons for all of us as we move forward is to expect the unexpected. Expect the unexpected as signs of God's loving care and work among us. That's a good way of looking at things anyway, because as it turns out, the unexpected lies at the very heart of the Christian faith. We see that in today's epistle reading as it highlights the most unexpected thing of all. That the message about the cross is actually good news. The message about the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing, Paul says. But to us who are being saved, it is the power of God. The message about the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing, and little wonder. Because in Paul's day, the cross was the most humiliating and devastating thing imaginable. It was an instrument of torture and death. And for his closest followers who loved him so dearly, the cross was the sign that Jesus' life and everything he stood for was dead and gone. No one could possibly have expected it. It sounded foolish and absolutely crazy. But it turned out that the cross of Jesus Christ was not the ending, but a new beginning. That's why in his preaching, Paul had the audacity to proclaim that the cross demonstrates the power of God. For through the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ, God transformed this instrument of death into the means of life and peace. God turned the most ugly thing imaginable into a breathtaking beauty that speaks to the ineffable joys of eternal life. If God did that with the cross, if God turned such weakness into unstoppable power, if God turned such foolishness into a wisdom that can safely guide us on the path that leads to abundant life, then God can and God will take the shattered pieces of our broken hearts and put them back together into a stunningly beautiful and unbreakable mosaic that will bring joy to all who behold. 
My friends, we have been given a heavy cross to bear. And it's going to be a long journey. We may wonder if we can move forward bearing such a weight. But we will help each other carry this cross. And we will do so knowing that in ways we may not expect. God will use our cross to display his triumphant power and his magnificent glory as we move through the sorrows of death into the joys of resurrection. So as we make our way, be on the lookout. Expect the unexpected. For the God who raised Jesus from the dead is at work among us in wonderful, surprising ways to raise us to new life. Amen.
for refugees, prisoners, and all who are in danger, that they may be relieved and protected. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. For this congregation, for those who are present, and for those who are absent, that we may be delivered from hardness of heart, and show forth your glory in all that we do. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the strength to persevere in the wake of the fire, that with God's help we may rebuild and re-engage our mission and ministries stronger than ever, we pray to you, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. For all who have commended themselves to our prayers, for our families, friends, and neighbors, that being freed from anxiety, they may live in joy, peace, and health, we pray to you, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. For those in need of healing, including Jimmy, Chris, William, Kay, Tracy, Anita, Leo, Wilma, Mary, Claire, Suzette, Wyatt, Bob, Randy, Edward, Reese, Grace, Brent, Randy, Jody, Carla, Lindsay, Gregory, Marty, Isaac, Casey, Tom, Gwenda, Chris, the 20th Special Forces Group, Jake, Herschel, Ronald, and Kristen, we pray to you, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. For those who await the birth of a baby, including Austin and Anna Catherine Jackson, son and daughter-in-law of Steve and Chris Jackson, we pray to you, O Lord. Lord have mercy. For all who have died in the communion of your church, and those whose faith is known to you alone, that with all the saints they may have rest in that place where there is no pain or grief, but life eternal. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord have mercy. For our neighbors at the Baton Rouge Police Department, for all law enforcement officers, firefighters, emergency responders, and medical workers who serve our community, we pray to you, O Lord. Lord have mercy. For the teachers, staff, students, and families of St. Luke's Episcopal School, we pray to you, O Lord. Lord have mercy. Rejoicing in the fellowship of the ever-blessed Virgin Mary, Luke the Evangelist, and all the saints, let us commend ourselves and one another and all our life to Christ our God. To you, O Lord our God. O Lord our God. Accept the fervent prayers of your people and the multitude of your mercies. Look with compassion upon us and all who turn to you for help. For you are gracious, a lover of souls, and to you we give glory, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord is always with you. Also with you. Please be seated. In the middle school gym, working great, so I'm, I'm glad, glad we have the space 
uh, for sure. And many thanks to the school, it's been so accommodating. Uh, and it's just kind of a great need. Uh, certainly join us after the service uh, for food and, uh, and for fellowship. Uh, look forward to that time together. You know, I was thinking that uh, Dennis Edmund would have loved worshiping in here because of the massive clock that you can see right behind the preacher. <laughs> it just occurred to me this morning that then I think he would have wanted to stay in here for uh, But seriously, uh, this space, I know that being in a gym, it lends itself to things being really, really casual. But I want us to be mindful that, yeah, there's food and coffee over here, but when, when we come into this space, this is our temporary safe space. So let's be mindful of leaving coffee and conversation to the side. We can always return to it after the service, but please be mindful of how uh, important it is that we honor uh, this space that we're in. Um, several things to note uh, by way of announcements. Uh, Ashley has uh, collected a lot of broken stained glass and has jars of those available if you'd like to take one home with you, we're asking to limit uh, one jar per family to make sure that as many people who want them as possible uh, can have them. But thank you, Ashley, for it. Again, I'm not sure how she did it, I don't really know. <laughs> uh, but it's a beautiful thing uh, as a reminder of where we've been and who we are, but also a symbol of hope moving forward into, uh, into the future. Um, we are continuing with our Lenten series, Soup and Salvation, uh, here at the gym on Wednesday evenings, begin, beginning at 5.30, there are prayer stations. Uh, if you'd like some time to, uh, to, to check in with someone and, and offer prayer, because this is a challenging time, obviously. Uh, the uh, dinner portion begins at 6, and around 6.30ish, uh, we have some time uh, for some formation. Uh, and reflection, and it's uh, it's been wonderful. So I hope that you can join us uh, as you're able to do so. Um, the adult and choirs class. I'm not really sure how this is going to work this year, uh, but next Sunday at 2:30 in the afternoon, uh, we will begin that. And um, that's for anyone interested in just learning more about uh, the Christian faith from an Episcopal church and an Anglican perspective. Uh, whether or not you intend to be confirmed uh, is really not the issue. It's just a way to... So we've had folks who've been Episcopalians for 50-plus years who've come. If you're interested, let me know. I, I really want to be able to communicate uh, with anyone who comes in case we have to make some last kind of changes. And by the way, if anyone has a projector that will work with a MacBook Air laptop, we lost ours, so if you kind of use one, we're going to replace it. But if, if you have one that I could borrow uh, for a Sunday or two, I'd really appreciate it. So re reach out and let me know. And then finally, uh, next Sunday at 5 o'clock here in the gym, there will be a game night for all ages. I think it's a wonderful opportunity for us to, to gather. I, mean, I think getting together is so important right now. Uh, so we'll gather uh, for games. There'll be dinner. And it'll be a wonderful time. So I hope you can make plans to join us for that as well. <laughs> Offer to God a sacrifice of thanksgiving and make good your vows to the most high. <clears throat>
Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the peace. <coughs> the gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts.
peace, to love and serve the Lord.